everyone. Welcome to Quarantine Stream, the show where Entertainment Weekly's writers and editors are sharing the things they're currently streaming from the comfort of their homes. I'm senior TV editor Jared Hall, and joining me today are TV critic Darren Franich, staff writer Devin Kogan, and staff writer Chancellor Agard. Hello to you all. How are you holding up? Doing good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something that's been interesting during uh, this this quarantine, this isolation that we're in, is that we're realizing that pre-quarantine days, we all complain about how there was too much content. But obviously in this current situation with social distancing, a lot of us uh, have more time now to check things out. Everyone, what is on your list? Something you have put off watching that you're finally now diving into. Darren, let's start with you. Uh, you know, Jared, I feel like you really kind of mapped out the problem before this gigantic problem pretty well. That like there was a time where the big thing we were complaining about was too much TV. Nostalgic for that era now. Um, but uh, a show that I'm actually rediscovering now, but I want other people to start discovering it, is airing right now on HBO on Mondays, and it's The Plot Against America, uh, a delightful story where the only thing you have to worry about is a horrific person being elected president. Um, it's a miniseries from David Simon and Ed Burns, who worked together to create The Wire, uh, which is one of the best shows ever made, and um, it's the kind of show that I think previous to everybody literally being locked inside, um, kind of was starting to fall through the cracks a little bit of peak TV. It's a really slow burn, um, but I just think it's a really moving and thoughtful and in its own way, kind of funny story about obviously very not funny things happening. Um, so that's kind of been my just thing that I'm making more time for now that we have more time. Yeah, you uh, you mentioned The Wire as, as I've seen a lot of friends on social media, you know, uh, kind of putting out the big question, hey guys, what should I start? Uh, watching, I've seen a few people say The Wire, and then the um, the Hulu movie Big Time Adolescence with Pete Davidson. Uh, one of the characters in that also mentions that she and I, she's like a high schooler, and she was uh, you know watching uh, The Wire on her laptop. So uh, that came to mind as well. So another great suggestion there. Uh, now Chance, is, now oh, is the time to finally dig into. Oh, sorry, I, yeah. I was just gonna say, yeah, no, like ahead. if if. If, if what you do during quarantine is finally get into the wire, then that's a quarantine well spent, I would say. <laughs> yes, yes, completely agree. Uh, Chance, now to you, what's something you have wanted to watch or been meaning to watch that you are finally looking forward to starting? I mean, it's funny. I've actually been trying to use this time to catch up on a bunch of screeners that I was behind on, um, which I cannot talk about because of embargoes and all that. But, and it's funny, apart from that, I haven't picked up anything new. Instead, I've been watching other stuff that I love. My, my, my roommate... Um, just started the bull type, and so we've been watching that every night, which has been another. That's another sort of comforting show. Mm -hmm. It's about three people working in a magazine um, that I and I can't relate to it at all, you know. Um, <laughs> and they're just like, and it's like, it's like half. It's like it deals with serious issues in a lighthearted way. Like everything works out in the end, no matter what, which is really comforting. And then I've also been rewatching, and I wrote about this too for for EW's Cornstein column or whatever we call it. Uh, person of interest I've been rewatching as well. I, I, it's such a smart and well-made show. Uh, it's from Jonathan Nolan, who's also behind Westworld. I firmly believe it's better than Westworld. Um, the cast is great. Michael Emerson, uh, Sarah Shahi, Amy Acker, Jim Caviezel, Roger P. Henson for the first three seasons. Um, and the show is just so good at just like building to a climax and staging this war between these two AIs and Again, I, I don't, don't find it comforting at all, but it's just still, it's just, I'm really entertaining to watch. I'm having a lot of fun revisiting it for the umpteenth time since it ended. Why do you think that show didn't get more attention? Because you're, you're not the only one I've heard say uh, who thinks that it's a better show than Westworld, but, you know, Person of Interest wasn't getting nominations or anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was a problem just of it being on CBS. You know, I mean, it was on CBS at the same time as The Good Wife, and I think as things sort of happen, like, you have to choose your warrior, and, like, The Good Wife was obviously the one you're going to choose, you know? Yeah. Um, even though I do think uh, it's just as good as The Good Wife as well, and they both actually deal with similar issues as well, which is really cool. Um, but I think that was part of the problem, too. It's, like, it was during that rare, rare period where CBS had two really, really, really good shows that, like, owned that, not that many people were watching. All right, uh, you guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be talking our favorite new shows to stream when we come back. Welcome back to Quarantine Stream. Today, the staff of Entertainment Weekly is sharing with you what they're finally taking time to watch on their queue 
during this time. All right, Devin, what have you been putting off but are now finally taking the time to fully binge? Mine is one that I've already binged all the way through because I loved it so much. Um, it is sort of a, it's something that maybe not a lot of people have watched, but it is the animated uh, Harley Quinn show on DC, streaming on DC Universe, which is, guys, it is so good. Like, I did not expect one of my favorite shows of the year to be an animated show on DC Universe. Um, it is such a ridiculous, over-the-top show and it's one of those things that it came out a little while ago season two is about to start airing i think on april friday april 3rd um and i was a little late to it and i i binged the whole first season in like one, in like two days i was absolutely obsessed with it also kite man kite man oh my god oh, yes yeah. kite man hell yeah <laughs> a, a deep cut dc universe uh super uh super villain uh kite man hell yeah that's his, his, his he's a uh... He's a tragic figure, uh, very Sisyphean. Uh, he keeps trying to be a superhero, a super villain, and just fails. But he can't give up because if he gives up, he has nothing left. Sort of, uh, Tom King popularized him, and anyway. But he's my favorite character in this universe at the moment. He has no superpowers. He just has a giant kite. Chancellor Devin, uh, can you guys say like on the like uh, 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 on the crazy ranking scale of Fox's Gotham, where does this show kind of rank? Like, because it sounds crazier actually, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> For what I've seen, it's about the same level. I think I don't think uh, I think it I think it just it has a benefit of being an animated show, so it can do a lot more that Gotham probably wished it could have. But it is <laughs> just as crazy. Uh, all right, guys. Um, are there any other series that you wish you could experience? for the first time all over again? Yeah, um, uh, you know, one show that uh, my wife and I have been kind of like just revisiting and we've been doing it for a while now slowly um, and it's a great rewatch, but uh, digging back into Mad Men, which is currently on Netflix, mm -hmm. uh, I still think that show is probably my favorite show ever and certainly just one of the most watchable TV shows to ever be about mostly just people in an office and then they leave the office and drink and make bad decisions and come back to the office still hung over and somehow usually, you know, pull out a professional success while their personal lives implode. <laughs> uh, seeing, you know, somebody like Elizabeth Moss, where that was kind of her first big role. And now, obviously, I think she's been on like three or four different great TV shows. Um, but I, I wish I could re-experience that for the first time, because even re-watching it, re-watching it, being on the fourth rewatch of some episodes, it still holds up just so well. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, three or four TV shows she's been on and in uh, The Invisible Man, which uh, I just uh, rented the other night and watched and enjoyed so much. Uh, a theatrical release, one that got put on VOD early. So uh, there's a little recommendation for you. Um, what about you, you guys, uh, Chance and, and Devin, a show you wish you could rewatch for the first time? Um, I think uh, Community, which actually hits mm -hmm. Netflix on April 1st. Um, and uh, <laughs> which, as Darren and I have talked about a lot, we hope that this 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 will be Community's chance to shine and really capture the zeitgeist in the same way that sort of uh, the office and parks and rec have in terms of nostalgia viewing. Um, hopefully it'll destroy Friends' nostalgia, um, which is <laughs> probably the most insidious force um, out there right now. Um, but, um, and so that next figures- to, that, Next to COVID-19, next yeah. to COVID-19. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, thank you. That, yes, thank you, thank you. No, uh, Chance, thank you for the recommendation. Chance, Chance and I are trying to create a community friends rivalry where there doesn't seem to be any. So, so uh, we are officially <laughs> yeah. announcing it here. <laughs> but that show, like, I remember loving it. I remember I started watching it, I think it's second week after it premiered way back in 2009. And I've loved it ever since. I wish I could just like go back and rewatch it. I think that's the- one of the shows that sort of in, like sort of blew my mind in terms of what TV could do, you know, and also made me sort of the annoying person I am now in some respects as well. So, uh, uh, yeah. But also a huge Donald Glover fan. Yes, that, ex exactly. That, it all came <laughs> from that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Devin, what's that show for you? I think the show that I've been thinking about a lot, mostly because I've sort of been like trying to bully my friends into finally like watching it and finishing it. I'm like, you have time. Now is the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And this is one I know, I know Darren will back me up on. And this is one I've been harassing Chance about for a very long time is Twin Peaks. Yeah! Oh. I love <laughs> Twin Peaks so much. And it is such a weird mix of like existential horror and dread, but also like it's kind of comforting in a really like strange, wonderful way because it's, and so it's one of those shows where people are like, oh, I'll get around to it. I'll watch it someday. And it's like, what else are you going to do right now? And now is a really <laughs> great time to watch all three seasons of Twin Peaks. So, no um, excuses. 
is this is me like explicitly bullying Chance in the final <laughs> session Twin Peaks. Wait, Chance, have you not seen all of Twin Peaks? No, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm this a, is me I'm bullying you also. <laughs> at the beginning of season two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of season two, and I know I think the whole thing with season two was like I've like watched I think the first two episodes, and I know that like it goes downhill, and then like it comes back up once like Gabriel Lynch returns for the final few episodes. Disagree. Dis- the Disagree. Is, is, the, is the hill is very high. high. The hill is always very high. <laughs> You guys, all of these picks have been great. I think we have uh, given everyone out there a lot to pick from. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Darren, Devin, and Chance for uh, joining me today. Hope uh, all of you watching will join us again next time for more of EW Staff Shares, their streaming picks for Entertainment Weekly's porn stream. I'm Jared Hall. Stay safe and please stay inside.